This video was sponsored by the Institute for Mapping Technology, where you can learn GIS in a single day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the USGS Earth Explorer to download old aerial photos. We start by taking a browser and going to eros.usgs.gov. EROS is a interestingly named website by the United States Geological Service and it contains or holds all of the aerial photos and satellite imageries and other things of interest for us. First thing we do when we get here is there is uh, the website changes from minute to minute. It shows different interesting uh, geologic features. It scans through a rolling pan of imagery, but we just care about finding data. So we click on the finding data tab. This is the best place to start any search. It explains all the products and data it has available. We are going to be focused on aerial photography and not just any aerial photography. We are focused on old aerial photography to be used for historic purposes or for tracking down things. So if we look at the aerial photography options, it explains all the programs it has, programs being projects it's undertaken in the past. From 1987 in the case of the NAP, uh, and it has one called Single Frame Records from 1937 to present. This really boomed somewhere around the World War II era where they had fitted planes with cameras that took reasonably stable pictures. It's always a problem to get a good clean picture in focus from an airplane that's vibrating. So these are available. Most of them have been digitized to a reasonable level. Some of them you might have to pay to get a high resolution imagery but most of them are freely available at a medium resolution. To get to this single frame record we have to use Earth Explorer which is a fairly good uh, but complex interface. We call this a, a aerial photography platform or a delivery mechanism to deliver aerial photography to you and it is bandwidth intensive so you do need to do this uh, if you've got a good connection. Now it does show lots of stuff. I'm going to go back to search criteria, clear coordinates, and now nothing's chosen. And I'm going to zoom out and this is probably this is probably the map you'll see when you log in. Now, it does ask you to log in to download data. So you will need to go log in and create a free, that is free as in free beer, free username and password. Your free account will then let you download all this free data. Have I said the word free enough? This is really good free information. If you want high resolution, you might have to pay for it unless someone else has done that. Okay, for address, we have several ways to do this. I could type in, let's say, Austin, Texas. I click the word show. It takes a while and then that nice red dot appears and something appears in the area selected. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Okay, so I've got an area selected. Now then, I want to choose a date. Let's say 1920 through 1970. I want to see what they've got. I'm going to leave it to search all months. And I click down here where it says data sets. That's important. 
because it doesn't default me to old aerial photos. It defaults me to everything. Well, it defaults me to nothing, but it shows me all these options. Now I know I'm after aerial photography and the old archived aerial photography is called aerial photo single frames. So I check that. I don't want aircraft scanners. I don't want DOQs. I just want to check those single frame photo photographs. When I'm done here, I click results. Now it takes a while to generate results and I don't want to stop the video and then start when it's found it. I want you to know this does take quite some time so that you don't freak out when it takes so long. Now you can search for multiple data sources. You could search for DOQQs or you could search for uh, side scan radar imagery but it's simplest usually to just just search for one type at a time. And this should be done, done momentarily. Once it finds the data, it's going to tell me how many data sets I've got and there will be some nice features that will display on a map what the outlines of each image is going to be. All right, so we found 14 images of Austin. Now, I'm not zoomed into Austin over here, if you've noticed. If I click Show Footprint, it will suddenly zoom me in. Now, a good aerial photography system is going to have overlap. So if I click on this, I expect to see about 50% overlap. In this case, it's, it's more, it's almost 60. If I click this one, wow, that's, that's just a lot more overlap. What, what dates are these? This is 28th of September, two, that, 1952. If I click on that, there's another image. Okay, so I've got a little too much imagery going on. I only want a little bit of overlap. And I don't want the yellow one. So those two look pretty good. Now then, if I want to see a little bit about the, the image itself, in the case of the pink, this one's pink. I'm going to click on the Show Browse Overlay. And there you have a preview. Now, that's interesting because I don't think it's really, it's geo-referenced in the overlay. But if I want to download it, there's another button here that says Download Options. Beside that is Add to Bulk Download and Order Scene. I'm going to click the Download Options and see what options I have. Well, I can immediately download this if I wish. So I will go ahead and do that. And instantly I'm allowed to download it. It's 39 megabytes. And for the sake of the video, I will cancel and not download it. Normally I could download it right away. If I wanted to know more about this photo, there is a Show Metadata and Browse button. I click that, I wait a moment, see what happens. Ah, okay, now it shows up. And now I've got a little bit of information. I know the project was called the XF000, if I ever want to research it. I know what frame number it was out of the camera. I know that it was taken... Uh, where is an altitude? There is an altitude taken at 10,000 feet. And they, they've put the scale at 20,000 to 1. 
and it does give me some geo-referenced corners, which I may or may not believe once I... Oh, and they intend to overlay 60%. This is 1952, so they didn't, didn't have best practices of a 40 to 50% overlay. Anyway, I'm going to close this. I now know a lot more about this, and I can now download these images. And if I didn't want these two areas, I just keep clicking footprints to see where we have, let's go to the next page, where we have other imagery. Anyway, this might take a little too long, but that is a quick reference guide to downloading historical aerial photos. And remember, you may not have any for your area of interest. These were probably taken mainly over urban environments or areas of geographic or environmental interest, such as Niagara Falls or flood basins. So I hope you got enough out of this, and, uh, and I will let you go. The next video is going to cover more about Earth Explorer and cover modern aerial photography. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And if you have any further interest in GIS or about learning GIS, please go to learninggis.com. We have other free data sources available and we now offer online classes in under a day.